On my left, you have Pierre Tosi, the broadcaster and writer, journalist from Bologna, Italy. You have myself, author and journalist David Katz, based in London, UK. On this session, we also have Ross Ivey and Ross Julio from the House of Rastafari. And we have our esteemed special guests, Ross Aikula and Clinton Fearon. Now, Ross Julio, I'd like to hand over to you for you to say a few words and to kick off this session as we look at uh, the Rastafari message and uh, its importance in our time. I, Leselassie the first, greetings, blessed love, each and every one, beautiful people, beautiful faces, and uh, it's uh, indeed a joy to be here, 2022, in this magnetic place, which is Reggae University, Rototom Sunsplash, House of Rastafari, and uh, of course, amongst all of you, which really makes make the, this festival unique. So first, I would like to give thanks for your presence, because we know that presence is the first act of love, and uh, there is nothing better that sometime a person can do. So thank you for being here. Thank you for those that have traveled from near and far to be part of this unique, unique moment. And uh, I am, once again, blessed to sit amongst elders, and, uh, and uh, it happened again this year too. And uh, I, am, I am so honored, you know, to be in the presence of Clinton Fern and Aikula Rastafari Sorry, please. Yeah. Yes, I. They, they have traveled from far, and uh, they are very, very busy on the schedule. Still, they have taken time, they have taken time to be here with I and I today. So I would like first to, you know, open or let Ras Aikula Tafari to open with a, a small blessing for this 22 edition of this uh, beautiful festival. So Ras Aikula. Yes, beloved. How oh, great the art is majesty. How oh, great the art. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, O Ja! Rastafari, Karamawi, Karamawi, Ixia Bione Masagan. Ja, O Ja, be merciful unto I and I and hear I when I call. Ever uplift I and I head to be removed out of the dens of Jagan liars, Tifu, Mongers, and Sasara. Ever right, I and I to give praises for Iva. I and I have been beaten rather for name or language in I man culture. Just smite the Jagan that seek I life and I jet salvation. Just stand up for I rights, justice against the unjust rules of Rome and the abomination creators of Babylon. Jews and Gentiles of different races, Jiva smite them with the sun by day and the moon by night. Let their ways be dark and slippery. Here they are. I and I, the optimist, stand strong in physical endurance and mental stability and spiritual grace, because we are confident in the victory of good over evil. Haile Selassie the first, live and reign. I, I, majesty, blessed love. Blessed. Give thanks, give thanks, blessed love, blessed love. Give thanks, Rasai Kula. And before to get into the topic, I would love Clinton Farron, if possible, to give a, 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 a greeting, a blessing to all these beautiful people that come here to, to hear your, your voice, your message, and your soul speaking. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. One thing I can say, I am just so blessed and happy and feel joy from within to be here with you all today. I remember uh, when I was like 10 years old, little Rasta man named Ram, brother, we call him Brother Ram in my country, my, in, in, in the hills. Uh, yeah. Going to school and he stopped me, hey, come here son, come here son. Yeah. And he built me a little spliff, no longer than this. You know, he said, take a draw. He lit it for me, you know what I'm saying? And showed me, he took a draw, and then he gave me, I said, take a draw. And he said, okay, all right, that's enough. Just a little small, he said, that's enough. All right, go on to school, go learn of Babylon so you don't become Babylon. 
<laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about at the time until later on it grew and grew and grew, you know. And, and I can not write anything else but about love and joy and peace and happiness for each and every one on the face of the earth. Because you know what? Where I grew up in the hills, I learned to love trees, flowers, birds, ants, everything. Mama nature. And so therefore I love each and every one of you just the same. And I tell you what, I love myself because if I don't love myself, I can't love you. So I love myself just the same. And I love you all, so hey. And my thing is, remember to do what you love and love what you do. Just be righteous about it. One love. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me here with you. Give thanks, Clinton Ferron. Wow. Wow. I don't know if we realize we are in the presence of giants. <laughs> Not only musically giants, but, you know, spiritual giants. So it's so beautiful to have you here. It's so beautiful for all of I and I that have been coming, you know, from different parts of Europe, of the world, after two years of, you know, standby to come and drink some water in order to, to water the roots. That's what we need. Yeah, people here is, is in need of water in the roots. Yeah. So we have already gone into the topic of today, which is the union of Rastafari and reggae music. Yeah, this topic of today is about this co coexistence. Yeah, this unity, this oneness of roots music, reggae music, and the Rastafari message. So we're gonna reason with our uh, guests here about the history and their vision about these two elements that we like to see as one unique elements. The positive, the, um, the, the uh, spiritual, the humanitarian side of reggae music which comes out of Rastafari culture of an enlightened and inspired way of living. So I don't know if David or any other. Yeah, so um, we're aware that each of you have made an important contribution in bringing awareness of Rastafari and the importance of Rastafari to the wider world through your music. And we'll be looking at that a little later in the session. But how we'd like to begin this session, Russ Jula and myself, we'd like to hear from each of you, Aikula, Clinton Ferrin, tell us your experience of first hearing music that was informed by Rastafari consciousness. Where did you first hear music like that, what did you hear, and what effect did it have on you? Yes. Give me a little more microphone, because I don't want to show. A bit more microphone <laughs> level, please. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yes, I give thanks. Yes, well, hear it up now. In Jamaica, I was one of the Rasta you, um, who rise up in Jamaica, seeing, and go through a lot of atrocities. From 1966, I'm C. Haile Selassie the first, physically, see him in the flesh, all right? And I'm going to tell you something. They have a little thing in Jamaica, they call the common entrance examination. And I'm on the past the common entrance examination to go at them high fool, when them say school, high fool, you know? And when I'm on approach and going to school, the headmaster from a school them called Wilmers say, this school is not for you. This school is not for you. No Rasta can come here. Mm -hmm. Then I was kicked out of that school and then go bumper hall. And next school them called St. Andrew Technical, where the headmaster was Isaac Henry. And him also said, youth, you can't come at this school. True, I had like Rasta youth. Anyway, it's so hot that I had to flee to the hills, see, and start to live in the Wissi jungle, chanting Nyabingi continually, see, and I tell you, say, I come from Sentan, see, and Sentan, Jamaica, you know, so Sentan, Jamaica, have certain amount of current, the Honorable Marcus Gabby. My gates was too grand and road, and him live right round the market street, round the corner. 
seeing that's where Marcus Gave rise up. So I and I always maintain the Marcus Gave tradition in terms of as a Gave Heights. My mother was a Gave Height, my auntie a Gave Height, my whole family. Seeing? It so happened that Empress Sarah, which her grandfather was the man that plays the fiddle when Gav used to come out in the town square. So this is the history that now my people have passed down to I and I. So chanting Naya Bingi was the heartbeat. So one day, I'm on whooped in, into Nine Mile because, you know, Bob Marley, mother, and Sidi, I call her and Sidi, and Bob call my mother and Vi, you know, through the scent and vibration. And I tell her, I say, in the hills I live. So one day now, the music, you know, my daddy had a sound system called the president. So I keep chanting, bingy, chanting, bingy, chanting, bingy. So one day, Augustus Pablo come check on the hills. And Augustus said to I, I I kill her, you know, said so I have a nice vibes. And I said, what do I mean? He said, fire, you know, said so I, if you start chanting some songs. And I man said, when the time is right. Seeing, but it never hit me at the time. Yeah, I see. It. Never hit me at the time to start recording. So I always chant, 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 chant. So, seeing. So after Bob, after Bob drop out, now it's like Sister Marcia Griffiths and Sister Judy look and I one day with the bridging called Sky High and I say, Bingy, you know, say I need to start do some tune. Pablo, come again with Naya Bingy Kojo. There yeah, I know Kojo. Yeah, yeah. Seeing. Could you come and say twice, I kill her. Yeah, man, they have to do some music, man. So that's where now I start seeing the music. And the real impact of the music now, you know, say it was Ross Michael in them time there, through the Naya Bingy vibration and Bongo Joe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bongo Joe. See, even Brother Clinton, too, you know, the man has some original pioneer in the thing, too, you know. See, the I'm an admirer, said we, yeah, as family. Seeing family? Yeah, so that's where, that's where the impact of the music come now, where it take a fake and I, through the Naya Bingy Ada, Rastafari. Perfect strength. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah so just. Just, yeah, Aikula, just, just to quickly recap, what you were saying essentially, as a schoolboy, you were ejected, not from one school, but two, and that was because you were wearing dreadlocks. Yes, I. Yes, and then, I. And then you're saying through the experience of being in the hills, you yes. were exposed to Naya Bingi music? Yeah, because... And it manifested that way. Yeah, because, you see, you see, you see the thing about it now, I and I know who are the current so strong in Isle Selassie after seeing his majesty, you know? And I and I didn't know, maintain them kings up there. And the matter of the day was to see the atrocities and the tribulation that I and I parents and family have been through to see that the black man redemption now becomes the people's liberation, that all nation gravitate to this musical reggae. So it's a power. And I man can say it's a blessing. So traditionally speaking, you know that religious, religious sect have, be, have established themselves from such time, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. And to see reggae, see, the birth of reggae just come last week. And to the international impact that this music takes to the world, the four cons of the earth. You go to China, a reggae. You go to Japan, a reggae. Anywhere you go on earth right now is reggae. Yeah, yeah. So give thanks for the music. Rastafari. Yeah. 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 Yes. Now, Clinton Fearon, what can you tell us of your experience? Yeah. How and when did you first hear music expressing a Rastafari consciousness? Oh, man, it's a, it's a long story. <laughs> it's a long story. Actually, it started when I lived in the, in the hills. And there's a little man that used to make bamboo flute. And I watched him, and I built a bamboo flute for myself. I used pumpkin stock. I used to hear, I didn't have radio, clock, time, or anything like that. I used stars and... and, and uh, 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 shadows for time, you know. Anyway, uh, 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 I build those things. I used to hear little sounds here and there from some of my friends who have little pocket radio and hear scatter lights and, and there. 
drum song which Brother Joe played. Brother Joe. Yeah, right, right. Then, hmm, why wow, this sound good? You know, then when I, wa I, when I was nine years old, the like elementary school I used to go in Point Hill, the, you know, went to Kingston, and, uh, and uh, uh, all the elementary school actually in Jamaica met at the stadium in Kingston. And uh, I actually, <laughs> I, li I lied to my dad, say, hey, we don't have to pay any money to go, it's free. And then I asked the teacher to trust me a ride. <laughs> so anyway, I got there and the scatter lights were playing. And they were having so much fun and the music hit me so deep. And I, I, and I said to myself, that's what I'm going to do. Yes, that's man. exactly that I'm going to do. Yes, I know I'm going to do it. I went home, I asked my dad to buy me a guitar and say, I don't have any money. So about a year later, I made me one. Rastafari. You know, use utensils like like fork, uh, fork that you eat with. You know, I, I cut the teeth off, use those for frets. I use broken glass for, for machete. You know, I'd make my own tool, six inches nail, yes, flat it out and use it for chisel, all of that. But I made my own guitar. Creativity. And <laughs> thank you, thank you. Just love the music, just love the music, you know. But, and my dad he used to go to Adventist church. I used to go with him too, and then have me in the choir for a minute. You know, I still didn't love the church runnings too much. You know, when, when the preaching are gone, I fell asleep. You know, when the music is going on, I'm awake, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I didn't know what that what was either. I feel I was being rude by not staying awake for the sermon. But when I went to Kingston and I met Brother Joe, Joe? Yeah, yeah, through Albert Griffiths, Albert, Albert Griffiths, yeah. Albert Griffiths introduced me to Brother Joe. Mm -hmm. And we and Brother Joe were sitting and play some rhythms. Exactly. Uh, 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 Cedric Mighton, Cedric yeah. Mighton, yeah. fast through, yes. fast through. Several, you know, yeah. Ross Michael, they would just go on the road yeah. from, from uh, yes. bass player, from scatter lights to light rivet, you know. So I realized, oh man, I'm, I'm in the midst of everyone here, you know. I soak in yes, everything, sir. everything, you know, from Naya Bingi to, to to, to scare, to, to rock steady, all of it, everything. And that's what I incorporate with my music today, all of it. Even some hymns from the church, you know, I incorporate in it because I just love music daily. And I think that's what Rasta music is about. It's about life and about all life. All of it, we know execute, you know, inclusive. You know what I mean? We all have a right to be here. Mm -hmm. We all have a right to be heard. We all have a right to be loved. But we also have the right to love one another as well. You know what I mean? And that's my philosophy on that. And, and I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning, you know? So, bless be and just guide and protect while you do what you love and love what you do. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so now you, each, each of you have invoked some historical figures and some historical events. Yes. So just to remind the good public gathered here about how far and deep and wide the branches of Rastafari are in this music, let's take a listen to an adapted hymn featuring some members of the Scatolites and uh, the percussionist Scully in his singing role as Zoot Sims. This is track two. Let's take a listen to a bit of Golden Pen. Yeah, now do either of you remember hearing music like this along the way or was it not really featured on the radio or in public? No, man, I tell you what, I, tell you, I, have, to say, I have to say something, sorry, sorry, I have to say something here, you know, because talking about Brad Scully, Mm -hmm. Rascoli, you know, when I when I just go studio one, you know, with gladiators and, and you know all trembly and nervous and things like that. Oh boy, this is this is bigger than me, you know. Oh, oh. Yeah. Rascoli was we were going this, oh boy, I'll mash it up today, you know. <laughs> you know, peer encouragement, you know. Scully was one of them that was totally real. Totally a real person, and it's like, you know, it's like no encouragement. 
you know, and I will never forget Brad Scully for this. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. I remember dread. Yes, sir. You know, and so, and so, <laughs> in past I'm gone, but the spirit live on. Yeah. You know, and his music shall be forever. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so my brother, do you want me to show you now what I do with that kind of music? Yes, show the good people play gathered that, here. Play that. Go for it. Okay, try to. Dahina Twat, I'm like Lich. Yes, original legs man, Ross Aikula. All right. So, so, this kind of music, no, this is how I grew up with this kind of music. Because we call that the shuffle. You don't, you don't need no girl to dance to that kind of music. As Brother Clinton said, you know, shuffle. Whole night. A shuffle at you know. Brother Clinton do it, you know. See, because I saw the whole of I and I grew as youth. We shuffle the whole night. Yeah, and people stop and say, whoa, yeah. whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, I was, a, I was a band shuffler. <laughs> <laughs> Rastafari, yes. blessings. OK. Yeah. Now, yeah, track three. Now, Ross Aikula, you mentioned being present when His Majesty came to Jamaica yeah. and that you witnessed him in the flesh. So, of course, that visit was immortalized in song by Peter Tosh mm -hmm. at Studio One. So let's give a little listen to track three yeah. and we'll see what memories this triggers for each of us. <laughs> Yes. Yes, sir. A yes, lot of memories, you know? <laughs> yeah, because the thing about it now, you know, I was going to save something for tomorrow. But I can at least go in and look apart right now. <laughs> yeah, all right. You see, the whole history around the visit of Haile Selassie I, strength and redeemer of Iron Iron life, it was a very mystical thing. The Rasta community, was a very stable community. The Rasta community could feed themselves, being creative, we knit, we weave, we do everything. But because of the atrocities now with the Coral Garden incident that come mash down Ayan Ay, tear down Ayan Ay, you know, see it. So what happened now is that the visit of the emperor now, seeing Ras Julia, can I go into it? Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. I have no choice. I see it. I see it. All right. This is a very important part of the history. The first Rastaman that I behold with these two eyes was an Asian called Bongo Stano. Bongo Stano is the elder that teach I and I everything. Bongo Stana used to be an elder now that used to go to school with my mom. Bongo Stana was born 1920. My mom born 1921. They used to go to school together. 
So at the age of five, through the grace of the most high, my mom said to I, I have a very good friend. I was five years young. I rasta never grow old. See? Five years young. So my mom take I to visit this man called Bongo Stano. But first she said to me, this is the man they call the black heart man. So I said, yeah. Five years old, you know. So I said, Mom, I, I, you know, I don't want to go, you know. What, what is this, you know? Mom said, no, it's a very unique person, and he's my classmate. We go to school together. So when I went and visit this patient, you know, see it? When I come around the corner, and my mom said, that's Bongo Stano. When I look at Bongo Stano, I could see, like, the sun ray coming off his face. The man was so joyful. He said to me, he, he, so he, I walk up to him, and I shook his hand, you know. And then Bongo Stano look at him and say, don't shake my hand. I don't shake hand, I shake heart. And he take his right hand and slap the ground. Blah! And said, Foundation is the revelation. So I said, he said, have a seat. So when I sit up on the ground and my mom was over there, then Bongo Stano, look at I, and he was just laughing. So I said to him, Bongo Stano, why do they call you the black heart man? And he just laughed, he said, oh, ja. He said, I and I are the ones that have been through great tribulation. And he said, blessed are they that hail him, Emperor Haile Selassie is the Almighty. So I said, tell me about the tribulation. He said, well, as you may not know the history of the youth, but your mom may know that we have been taken away from the continent of Africa. See, in the slave ship leave Liverpool in England and go to the Guinea coast in Africa. And then they cargo I and I into the Western world for 400 years. I and I have nothing to show. He said, the Jews get their pay, the Japs get their pay, the Africans get no pay. So he said to I, the Honorable Marcus Mose Agiavi, he was a youth. Yeah, Bongo Stan was a youth when Gavi used to walk around the place and people used to ask, stone him, you know. When Marcus Gavi I speak about the God of Ethiopia, you know, because Marcus Gavi was the first one on the island that speaks about the God of Ethiopia. And he, sh and he said, the Lion of Judah shall come to rescue Ayanai. And he said, 1924, the Honorable Marcus Gavi went into Madison Square Garden and have a public speech, and he said, where is the black man's government? That time, Marcus Gavi had the UNIA, the United Negro Improvement Association, and he said, he said, where's the black man's government? It's time for us as a people to look to Ethiopia, because the king shall be crowned. And in the crown of the king, you shall see seven miles of black star line coming into the harbor. And I was just listening to Bongo Stan. I was just listening to everything, you know. And he said, youth, you will see one day. And my beloved, I tell you, say, 1966, I becomes 10 year old. And my mom was living at a place called Pickersteth. And Haile Selassie came into Kingston. And Bongo Stana said, yes, I, I and I go and chat go see the king. Come and see the Rasta God today. And I said, Bongo Stana, I can't do that. I can't run in front of the house, you know. And it's so hot that I and I didn't have to go to Kingston. It's so hot that when his majesty come into Kingston, his majesty take the real road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the real road. Yeah. And come to a place called Montpelier. So when I went to the train station now with Bongo Stano, him lift her up and put her on his neck and say, Bingy youth, witness God today. And when his majesty, I went tell the item, you know, when his majesty, when the, 
when the train door opened, you know, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs spread the red carpet on the ground. And he said, Oh, Haile Selassie the first, line up to the start to read out his titles, you know. He's here today for a state visit. And we welcome Haile Selassie the first. And I'm on his shoulder like this, you know, Bongo Stana shoulder, looking in us. It's a blood fire. And beloved, when, his, when the train door open and I see his majesty go like this and take out the left foot. And when the left foot come out, I'm a witness a gush of wind. Boom, come out of the train door, out from him pants foot. And start to blow everything, start to blow away everything. The policeman had to start blow away the train sign, drop a gun, bop, everything start blow away. And when I see that, his majesty come out to the right foot and start to step on the carpet. Then he levitate off of the ground. And the carpet start blap, 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 and just peer dust. And everybody start cover them head, the policeman and start run. And when I see that as a youth, Clinton, I tell the I say, I'm on holding shoulder like so. And jump off him shoulder and run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I run. So when I run, I run to my mother and, my, and mama said to me, say, boy, what happened? I said, mama, the Rasta God is a magician. She said, boy, what did you see? I said, mama, when the Rasta God step out of the train, I jump off a bongo stand on the shoulder. And when he step off a train and walk on the red carpet, he was walking in mid-air. And I see a gush of wind. Come out time pants foot and start to blow everything. And my mom just hold me like so. He said, son, always remember the ancient prophecy says, whenever you see God, the whirlwind shall be at his feet. And that's my testimony in seeing our divine majesty, Emperor Hylas Lassar I. So my beloved, I tell you, yeah, that is my testimony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rastafari. Check. Uh, I have a question for both Clinton and Aikula. The question is about Count Ozzy. I'm wondering if you have personal recollections of Count Ozzy because uh, through records we know it's probably the very first Rasta musician going into a recording studio where the boogoo drummers of Count Ozzy, but very little is known about the man Count Ozzy. I had something through uh, interviews, some recollection from artists, but if you have some personal recollection, it, it, it would be very good. Well, well, me and my brother Clinton could have gone more into Count Ozzy now, but I'm a know of Count Ozzy as a Rasta youth, and we used to learn jumps from Countazi. See? We used to learn jumps from Countazi. City in and whole vibes. But maybe Brother Clinton might have more contribution to make about Countazi. Rastafari. Uh, no, you say because I'm a country youth, I'm a go con <laughs> I'm a country youth, you know, I, I, I know of his music, know his music, but when I went to Kingston, I just passing by here and there, and we never really have a discussion or I get to see him yeah. perform, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. But yes. I know of his music, I know his music. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, Countazi, Countazi was a stalwart, you know? I would say Countazi was a genius in terms of his instrumentation, the way how he put music together, you know? Because, you know, I don't know if anyone here ever hear Haile Selassie Royal Band play. You ever hear the band of Haile Selassie play? Yeah, they are here for my music. All right. Same. I'm the same. Same. same music. Sound the same. Yeah. Royal, divine. When you hear, when you hear um, Count Azzi, you know, say, his mu music is coming from the throne room. Because when I listen to certain tracks from Haile Selassie band, is the same exact thing. And I was saying, how count as he reproduce it like that? Yeah, yeah, check it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So count as he was a genius man. Rastafari blessings every time. Okay. 
So in a, in a few moments, we're going to open things up for question and answer. So you, the good people here at Rotatom Sunsplash Reggae University, can put your questions to our esteemed guests. So give some thought to what you want to put to our guests. But before that, I have a couple of other questions. And you know, we've been talking about historical matters. But it's also important to remind that this music comes right up to the present. It's very much a living music. And the Rastafari consciousness in the music is a very living part of the music now. So, um, Selector, give us a little track, uh, a little taste of track 13, just to remind us how up to date we are with this music. <laughs> See the most, the good, the bad, the worst. I said the longest liver, hear the most, the good, the bad, the worst. The longest liver, feel the most, the good, the bad, the worst. I said the longest liver, know the most, the good, the bad, the worst. And I am thankful for all. I am thankful for all. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you all. Thank each and every one of you. Thank you. Yes. So, Clinton, this is from your current album, your new album, Breaking News. Tell us about the album and tell us about that particular track. That part particular track, you know, um, uh, it's me summing up my history coming up the line and went through some rough times, went through some sickness, I got over it, still doing music, and when I look at the whole thing and the musicians that, that perform with me and, the, and, and, this, and breaking news, I just considered myself blessed, and it's just a simple way of just giving thanks for everything. That's what the song is about, you know. I'm just giving thanks for being alive, doing what, still doing what I love and loving what I do. <laughs> as simple as just that. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, yeah, if our other panelists down the other end have any question or input to make, uh, feel free to uh, come in now. Um, yes, I, um, Rastafari has always been like very conscious about environmental things, about food. Rastafari has always been very conscious about the way people live together. Right now we live in a time where you feel like there's crisis all over. We have an environmental crisis with the climate change, war not only in Ukraine but in several places in the world. Um, how do you feel Rastafari can contribute to, to solve those crises? Well, 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 the, I may not know, but right to and true, I'm on liberty. I'm always a farmer. Always a farmer. Right now in Jamaica, I get a champion farmer for three years straight. I and I with the Rasta community in a place called Amity, Westmoreland. With a bridging called June Yamanen, I stagier. Yeah, I stagier. See? It? So I and I am always running farm. Right now in California, I have a farm in California that I am on a deal with farming. I just reap up, before I leave California, I reap up bags and bags of garlic. Because right now, the garlic that is coming into Jamaica right now is coming from China. And them thing they run a cesspool. See? So I am now set up a seed bank, which is very crucial. I harvest my garlic and I have bags and bags of garlic right now that I'm gonna take to Jamaica. 
to rekindle the Gideon farm forward in Jamaica. Because as it, at its present time, we have the Gideon farm in California. Because the region that I and I live in California is an organic zone. A lot of people do not know much about California. But you see, California, the name California is from a black woman. And the black woman is Queen Khalifa. She was a black Madonna. So I and I follow the principles of Queen Khalifa by tilling the soil. So this is what the Rasta community now is doing now. I always promote music, culture, and agriculture. Rastafari. That I bless him. I bless him. Any comment or uh, thing yeah. to add, Clinton? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that, you know what I mean? I grew up in the country myself, and like I said, you know, sugar cane, uh, you know, we planted banana. We have a banana that we call Gross Michelle banana. It's, it's, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know the one, right? Yes, sir. Right, right. You know, and all kinds, you know, you drink uh, spring water yes, and all that. We lost that along the way. You know, I remember in Kingston there where, where there was, uh, in, on Spanish Town Road, there was uh, at spring, yes. you know, and some and some and someone bought the land mm -hmm. and built something over it, and then charged people for to come there and spoil it. You know, what I'm trying to say is that it's upon all of us yes. to make a difference. Sure. We cannot wait on government to make a difference for us. All of us have to chip in and make a difference. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank now. You. Uh, just before we move to the question and answer section, we just want to play a little bit of one last intriguing track. And this is by Aikula, and it's got some combination special guests along with him. So give us a bit of track six. Hey! It's the last, the first, no? Yes, my What can you tell us about this track and yeah. who you recorded it with and how? Well, I, 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 want, I want to tell you, so you know, you see, where well, is a vibration, you know. You know, as I and I say, the amount of atrocities that I and I have been through. You know, I give thanks to the Morgan's heritage, say so don't have a dread to be Rasta. And I'm on fully overstand where they're coming from. But at the same time, you have to really overstand that. I and I covenant is a symbol of strength. And it's a commitment with the Almighty I and I take when I and I grow and I dread like, you know. And the amount of persecution and tribulation and atrocities that I and I have been through because just because of I dread luck, like, I couldn't go to school. Them beat I down, them fight I, see? You know, say no. Jo I, I'm going to tell you something. 1979, you know, that was before Bob Marley passed away, you know. I and my bridge in them called Builder, we went to Grand Cayman to meet up with some other bridge in. And when I and I went to Grand Cayman, them take I and I and throw I and I in a prison because of a dreadlock. And you know what the woman said to I? She said, you are not famous like Bob Marley, and Bob Marley could not come here. <laughs> so how the hell you come to Grand Cayman? They chose in jail. 
So these tribulations, and because I and I feel the pain, so I had to come with something. Now, one day I'm on chat up and check Steve, you know. I rag them, you know, the Mali soldier, them, you know, the youth, them, you know, them look up to I as an elder for them, you know. You so, mean Stephen Marley? Yeah, Stephen and, 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 and Juna Gang, you know. So I went up to the studio and I said, you know, so Steve, me, I feel a little energy, you know. And I said, what do you feel like you, lah? So I take, I take up the Congo, the Kete drum, and start chant the Kete, you know. And I said to him, listen this. If Baal tell a Rasta, then tell I, who am I? If Baal tell a Rasta, then tell I, who am I? You know, and I say, blood clot. He must say, wait, I kill her. A serious thing that you know. I may say, you know, see, after I and I chat through certain things and certain tribulations, chatting and you know, see the jolly bus, seeing Baal Taylor Flingstone, at the time you know, Geos bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the Geos bus at all, you know, when we have to have a tech bus and, and go from point A to point B, people would have shown we are for the bus. Flingstone, Pan I and I, even on a back of all, people Flingstone, and I say, Rust down a boy on our teeth. This and that. So I said, no, I have to respond to the music, you know. And so when I do that, Steve said, yes, I. Make I touch peace I. And then Juna Gang come and say, yes, Father Kula. Make I touch peace I too. So, you know, let the people hear it. OK, a little then bit more on track 16 again, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's how it was created. I <laughs> Selassie, that's the fire. So we've reached the time for a question and answer for our esteemed guests. So who would like to put the first question to Clinton Fearon and Ross Aikula on this subject of Rastafarian the music? And no need to be shy. Now's your chance. Our special guest. OK, we've got a couple questions. Blessed love. Bless My you. question goes to Ross Aikula. Brother Aikula, when I come out with their music, like on public, in the, I would say mid to late 80s, mm -hmm. yes. how the I was received in Jamaica with the music? Because at that time, it's a whole lot, whole lot of dancehall crap rule Jamaica, and there was not much space. <coughs> I. There was not much space for roots music. I know that I was well, well received in Europe, but how it was in Jamaica? True, the grace of the most I, I listen to the first. Them say a king is not recognized in his own community, you know. They are saying, but you see the thing about it now, when I do the music in Jamaica, I, I didn't know the fight where I and I would get because through I and I a stalwart in the Rasta trad. So I wasn't even looking at Jamaica. I was just doing something. And it's so hot that out of the farm where I run, I make some papers in the farm, some money, and I say, you know something? Go take a walk out of Jamaica, you know and take the music out in Europe, you know. And so I and I link up Ras Ibe. 
this bridge in here. See it? And I and I link can say you know something. We're going to put a, a tour together by ourselves. As I can tell you, yeah. we have no company behind us. It's just I and I and Ross, as Ross is at work together. So I man buy 14 tickets and come in a Switzerland. And when I and I come in a Geneva, Switzerland, no, no one. See, just come in till I reach an airport family. <laughs> The people say, where are you going? I said, well, we just have tried Earth because we are inhabitant of the planet Earth and in Earth there is no barriers and boundaries. So the immigration officer said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Repeat it again. So I said, well, we are inhabitant of the planet Earth and in Earth there is no barriers and boundaries to stop I and I as Rasta. <laughs> so he said, said to I and I, go, go, <laughs> right? And, 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 and I and I went to an art exhibition. And when we went to the art exhibition, I meet this lady. She was a, a top artist from Algeria. We're just talking, you know. It's a mystical question that you asked me a while ago. So here we are now. So go to the art exhibition. I see an Ethiopian virgin and I say, I know you. So I said, from where? He said, I recognize you from Jamaica. I'm his majesty grandson. And I said, I said, Dawit. Because when his majesty came to Jamaica, Dawit was a youth just like myself. And the youth said, recognize I from them time there. So anyway, we link up and he said to I, where you guys staying? And I said, well, we're not staying anywhere, you know. We just come in on Europe and decide, say, well, we're going to look at a house. And, and you know, because we're going to change, so we're going to rent a place. And he said, oh, no, my house is your house. And him take I and I, the 14 I and I, <laughs> and carry to him in place. They have a place in a near, his majesty have a house in a near Switzerland. And him take I and I and say, and, and you know, so the virgin put I and I to bed like a baby. <laughs> And he said, you guys can stay here till you get yourself sorted out. And then the same lady now tell, tell her and I, say she have a place that we can stay. So after staying with Prince Dawit for about three, three weeks, we contact the lady and the lady said she have a place, which is the Guinea Embassy. So I and I end up at the Guinea Embassy house. No one was there, so we just take over the house and living in that house for about two years. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, yeah, you remember? <laughs> yes. That's where I and I link up, you know. Yeah. See? And we live in the embassy house, and then now we make a little change and we get a bus, link up with, 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 with Rasaibi, and we say we can put a thing together, and we put a tour together. See, working together collectively without no company. And we do it and we go Scandinavia. Yeah, yeah, I can reason. Rastafari and good and pleasant. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I, good sweet memories here. So, Rasai Kula, together with I and I, we uh, spend good time to, in preparation. We set up something called the Scandinavian Reggae Circuit. So, we spend one year with an old Volvo car driving through Sweden, Finland, Norway and Denmark to find out in every big town if people love reggae music. And everywhere we go we find the best clubs with the best sound systems, best PA and ask them would you love to have live reggae music and they say of course but we hear that these Jamaican people they are complicated to deal with and we don't have no connection. So we said no problem you will deal with I and I. So and then we drive all the way to London, park this old Volvo and fly to Jamaica. Yeah. and started some reasoning. Yes. We went back and we worked it out with the first tour we did, I think it's with Ital's. Yes. And yeah, the group Ital's and just yes, sold out, sold out. Yes, and then Akula two times. Yes, and it was mystic, we do a tour 
And the biggest man is the drummer, yeah. Granville. Yeah. And we saw him can play food, he can play drum with him shoes, come just in our work, he play barefoot. Yeah. And he never need no mic, because the man just so heavy and nice. Yes. But he don't have no passport. <laughs> so we do a whole Scandinavian tour without passport. <laughs> this is, you know, this is not Schengen time. Yes. You have to have a visa in your passport <laughs> for every man. So how we do it, when we finally go to south of Sweden and get them out of the police station after about four hours <laughs> in a my minibus, yeah? We, we go driving up the first show is in Oslo. When we come into Norway border, I'm telling everybody, quick, quick, passport. With nine people in the car, eight passport. <laughs> All right. Reach the passport control, I hand out, I'm driving, I hand out eight passport. The man looked for me, he got through every passport carefully, see the stamp is there. Then he walk around the whole bus. And every face, he see a black man with shining, smiling to him. And no, no European police, no Scandinavian police. He can't recognize a black man from the next one. It's just like that. And he don't want to look stupid. So he don't want to try to co connect one man with a passport. So he just walk one round around the bus and give me eight passport for now people and I hear me we went Norway we went Sweden we went Finland and we went Russia, Russia. I and I was probably the first one to bring a Jamaican reggae band to Russia when just the Russia breakdown I kill a Rastafari and it was a magic the reception in Russia was incredible because they never have no reggae, yes, but they love reggae. Yes, sir. They love reggae the same way. So I and I know that the power of this music, yes, sir. if there's anyone can make a change in this world, yes, it's I and I. Yes, and everyone start with themselves. Not true? Yes, sir. Rastafari. Give thanks okay. some prayers. Okay, okay. I, now, I, I know, yeah. I know we got some more questions, I remember, so. Yes, sir. Who else had questions for our Steam Gotta Give a Go? Oh, yeah. Hello, hello. Give thanks. Uh, my question is to Mr. Clinton Ferron, but first of all, I want to show you my maximum respect because you are a big, big legend of Roots Reggae Foundation. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> Thank and you. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> So many years performing and recording. Now you have like 71 or 72 years and you are in excellent shape. <laughs> we, and we can enjoy your music. So uh, I just want you to tell us uh, about a story maybe in your early years with the Gladiators and with your relationship with Albert Griffiths, who sadly passed away yeah. like last year, I think. Uh, Gladiators um, was a foundation of reggae music as well. It's, it's very true. It's very true. Um, we, we went through some rough times. We went through some rough times. Uh, sometimes we went through times where we just, we share a banana. Albert, Gallimore Sutherland, and myself especially, share one ripe banana, drink water, make some more music. You know what I mean? Share a mango. You know what I mean? Buy a pound of flour and some ackee and saltfish and <laughs> boom. <laughs> Sugar and water with lemon, you know what I mean? And boom, without ice. Yes, sir. You know, but the music was the forefront. The music was the forefront. We really love music dearly, you know. And I remember my first time out of, out of uh, Jamaica with the gladiators, it was uh, we play at in England, uh, in London actually, at a place called the Vera Club. Uh, I can't, it's so, much, so long ago I can't remember the year. But, but, but I remember, you know, like three people fainted in the club the night, you know, it was too packed. You know, but the joy outside of those people fainted. The joy I felt, just tell me, so well then, those bananas, those that we're three, we eat one banana, you know, uh, uh, we share a couple of dumplings, you know what I mean, worth every minute of it. Because when you look at the people and how joyful they were and enjoying, you know, and it keeps going. And those kind of lights is the light that keep me going the same way. You know what I mean? It's, it's good to create. And one thing I want to say too, no matter how fans and friends and people tell you, hey, you're on top, you are the best. See yourself. No, <laughs> no, no. 
I, I see my, uh, yeah, yeah, my philosophy is, you know, I'm working towards 100% right now because of my age. I could say, well, then I'm at 30%. I still have 70% to go. I'm keep on learning. I'm keep on learning because I love it. I love it. And this is for all, I'm saying this for each and every one of us. If you're not doing what you love and loving what you do, it's not too late to start. It don't have to be music. It can be making shoes from your passionate about it. Go for it. That's why I'm so young, my brother. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Bless you, bless you. Thank you for that question. Now, we've reached the time when this very mystical session is about to come to its close. So who would like to put the last question to our special guests gathered here? Got time for one last question. So don't squander it. Who wants to put the last question and don't be shy? OK, we got one last question at the back here. Brother Clinton, this one goes to the eye. Yeah. <clears throat> um, was it the one shared banana, the little lime water with whipped sugar in it, that made it possible that in a fide item area, we see so many duos, trios, quartets, people, brethren and sisters coming together, chanting, and we don't see that today. I don't see not one quartet. I don't see no trio. I don't see no vocal harmonies the way the item they deal with it. It's true, my brother. And you know what? It's like we have too much options these days. That's part of it, you know. Many options today. Back then, it was a way out. It was a way out. You found something, you don't let it go. You know what I mean? So when you find a group like a trio, like the Diamonds, you know, Meditations, you know what I mean? You stick with it. You stick with it. And you keep on working. Remember the, the cables? The cables. Why, baby, baby, why, why? Okay. They went to Coxon. I don't know this for sure. I heard it from good grounds. That they went to Coxon uh, addition. And, and Coxon, you know, kind of just run a joke because they weren't ready. Hey, come back in three years. Go practice and come back in three years. You know, <laughs> figure that they, they would just forget it. They went away and they go practice for three years, come back, a hit. Yes, it was a hit yes, after three years. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes, so that's what determination can do, you know what I mean? And we were determined, you know what I mean? And I, 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 I say this to my, to my brethren, them who are still don't lose the fire because you know what the branch cannot survive without the root so don't lose the fire brethren you know what I mean let's okay. keep on going same way and pass that torch on to the younger generation because you know what together we can make a difference divided we are nothing yes, sir. Yes, and this sir. is for all people I'm talking about yes, sir. Right. okay blessings yes now Right about now, we're going to take a little break. We are going to be right back here, 7 p.m., when our special guest will be Julian Marley. So go take a breather, refresh yourself. And also, don't forget, tonight, 8.15, uh, sorry, tomorrow night, Wednesday the 17th, 8.15, on the main stage, Clinton Fearin with the Rhythm Source Band. So one more time, warm round of applause for our special guest. Ross I. Kula, thank you. Clinton Farron, and thanks to the House of Rastafari for jointly chairing this session. And be right back, 7 p.m. this evening.